Hi everybody and welcome. My name is Linda Frank. I'm a local artisan. Um, mostly I work in fiber, though sometimes I get to play with other things as well. And I do some speaking and teaching in the area as well. And today uh, we're here to talk about knitting. So let's get right into that. I designed this cowl for this presentation here. This is our sample. Um, you can see that it's it's pretty simple, um, which is a good thing for beginners and for also for those of us that just want something quick to whip up. Um, this took me uh, just, I think, not even two days. I think about a day, but I didn't have a ton of other things to do that day. So um, it's a, a basically a stockinette stitch. This flat part up here is just stockinette. That's what we call that. You knit when you're going one way and uh, purl going the other. And then this little bit here with the checker, checker squares, that's knit, purl, knit, purl. This one I did uh, 45 stitches across. And so there are nine blocks. Each of them are five stitches wide and five high. One of the reasons I really like this cowl is that, you know, it doesn't have to be a cowl. If you wanted to make the middle piece here much longer, you could make it a scarf. Or if you wanted to make the whole piece much wider, it could be a nice uh, shawl or wrap. Or even um, maybe a lap blanket or a full-size afghan. Um, if you used a different type of yarn, it could be much, much wider again and warmer for a really cold day outside in our, our western New York winters or it could be um, made out of fingering weight yarn and be much much lighter. So this is just a, a regular size 4 DK weight. Again because I made it a cowl I put these little buttons on the edge um, and then on the other side and I didn't make it edge to edge I made it side to edge. So if you put it this way, then the side comes around and gives it that lovely kind of wrapped cowl look. And so to attach it here, I just put some little crocheted loops. You could use ribbon. If you uh, were a little more advanced, you could even put some buttonholes in the side here, and that would be absolutely fine. But as is, it's a great beginner project or uh, you know, quick workup. Um, but if you would like to adapt it and make it look like something that is all you, that is absolutely fine. Oh, and the one thing, other thing here, I uh, did use a rolled hem. And this, this will just happen for you. There's 10 rows here before I started the checker box. Um, but it's, it's stockinette. Okay, so when you just make stockinette and you don't uh, block it or do anything else to it, it will just roll up like that. That's called a roll hem. Um, some people love those, some people do not. Um, my grandmother was not a fan. She kept ironing things for me because she didn't like the rolled edges, but I, I thought it was kind of cute. Um, I'm a fan of the rolled hem. Uh, but if you didn't like it, you could put a different kind of edging on the, on the end here, and that would look totally different too. So let's get into the actual knitting. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm going to do one more thing first. I've had so many questions just lately about the difference between knitting and crocheting. This piece is crocheted, and you can see that these circles... They're pretty firm material. Part of the reason is because this is made with an acrylic rug yarn that someone had given me. They didn't want it any longer. And it does very well for uh, the purpose that I have it. It's a, a table runner. Um, when the kids spill something on it, it, it just wipes right off. <laughs> it's just fine. And it was meant to be something I was just playing with the design. But you can see that this much firmer design uh, of fabric when you get it made. Um, and crochet tends to be a little bit firmer than knitting. It doesn't stretch as much when you're doing just basic stitches. Now, if you're doing different types of laces, it's a different story. But this is just a single crochet. And you can see that it's pretty, it's pretty tough. 
Um, and that's exactly what I wanted out of it. This one, and I haven't even finished this piece yet. This is from a skein of Icelandic wool that my sister bought me when she was in Iceland. Um, and it's just a beautiful, will be a beautiful scarf. It's beautiful yarn already. Um, but you can see that it's much, much stretchier. Now, some of this, again, has to do with the fiber itself. This is wool, which it tends to be much springier than acrylic. Um, but it also has to do with the stitches and the fabric itself, the, just the nature of knitting and crocheting. So in the end, is one better than the other? Absolutely not. It's, it's your preference and it's what you want to do with it. So there is no right answer to which one is better. Um, but I've had that question just a lot of times in the last two weeks. So thought I would bring that up as well. So first let's talk about some needles and there are just lots and lots and lots and lots of types of needles, right? So we have, let's see, bunches of them. Okay, so first of all, they come in different materials. Right, so these are um, an aluminum needle. This is one that I use for making lace. It's got a little bit pointier end on it, which I really like for lace because you're often using a lot of stitches at a time. Uh, these are not my smallest ones, but my mother often says to me, how do you use any that are this small? Uh, these are size one looks like. Um, but I have some that are, um, once you get to zero and they start getting smaller, you can have zero, 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 zero. I have some of those. Um, I am, I am a huge fan of the bamboo needles and the wooden needles, but for lace, sometimes I do, uh, when they're very tiny like this, I like the aluminum because they don't bend as much. Sometimes I have had, uh, my bamboo ones get um, in the bottom of my bag and bend and even break. So um, these these are really nice for that kind of thing. And some people just use the aluminum all the time and really, really love it. Of course, we have straight needles. And again, you can get these in, in aluminum, uh, steel, uh, plastic. These are plastic, but you can have some really beautiful plastic designs in these. Um, wooden bamboo pretty much anything you can think of you can probably find a, a knitting needle in that and they're called straight just because you know clearly they're straight a little bit less of the uh, pointiness there on the ends and these are short ones these are kids ones that I have to teach the kids um, and they come in different colors because uh, you hold one with your right hand and one with your left right um, though if you want to go get a pair of these because it makes it easier you know, no judgment on my part. I, I think this is a great way to learn. Sometimes these are much longer. Sometimes they're shorter. Depends on your preference again and on the project you're working on. And then there is these ginormous ones. I get lots of questions about these. These are a size 50, you can see here. And um, the size here relates to the millimeter size that the needle actually is. So Usually your pattern will give you both the size and the millimeter, but uh, particularly in the European patterns, you might just get the millimeter size. So just keep that in mind. These are for some pretty bulky yarn, right? This is this was a fun project that I made a uh, scarf for a friend of mine, um, but you, I, it's pretty popular to do big chunky blankets and that kind of thing with these great big uh, needles. Lots of fun. There is double pointed needles, okay? So these have the point on this end and on this end. And this is used for circulars, this types of projects. So a cowl that you wanted to make in the round. So you don't have to seam up the edge like we did with mine here. Um, it's just always gonna be in the round. Or socks, or um, sometimes the body of a sweater. You would use a circular need, uh, a double pointed needle here to make a circular project okay or there are circular needles right so they're two usually shorter needles 
uh, that have the point on one end and they're usually narrowed at this end but not really to a point and there's a cord in between the cord might be plastic it might be a, a steel cable wrapped in plastic or it might be you know something else that somebody dreamed up but those are the two two most common I really love circular needles. Um, I find them easier to store and very, very often I am making something circularly anyway. So this is my favorite. And like I said earlier, the bamboo is my favorite. So that's what I'm going to use here. And your size of your needles will determine, will be determined by the size of the yarn that you're using and also by the project that you're doing. And so when we get yarn, Sometimes, if like this is a lovely yarn, I had a beautiful baby alpaca I was going to do this with, and uh, it was very hard to see against this green felt that I have as the background. So I ran and got uh, this, I think it was at Michael's, um, and it's Baby Bliss by Loops and Threads. Um, and it tells you here, these these little wrappers for your yarn will really help be helpful. So this one tells us here is a size four yarn, which is kind of a medium. So if I got a bulky yarn, it would be, you know, twice as big, maybe three, four, five times as big. If it's a fingering weight yarn or a lace weight, it would be much finer than this. And they tell me here that I need either a size seven knitting needle or an H or an eight crochet hook. So the difference between a knitting needle and a crochet hook, crochet hook has this hook, this little loop catcher at the end here, okay? It's a little different than the knitting needle here. Now this is a starting point. I know that I tend to knit a little bit loosely. Uh, many people, when they're just beginning, tight, 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 tight. It, their knitting is really because um, you're you're stressed, right? And you're just concentrating so hard on doing it. So I would start if I was a beginner, and this said you need a seven. I would probably start with an eight. Um, though you could start with a seven, you might get it right off the bat. Lots of people do. I know that I tend to knit a little bit loosely, so I got us a, a six for today. Here's some washing instructions. Um, you wanna you wanna wash it in some cold water here. Um, don't dry clean it. You can throw it in the dryer, which is good to know, but don't iron it. It's acrylic, it will melt, okay? Um, so these symbols here, and you can look up online what all of the symbols mean. Um, this will be helpful when you're determining what you need to do about this about you know taking care of your project. I often if I make it for somebody I will include this in the package so they know as well or if I'm selling it. If you're using a hand dyed yarn which is my you know very favorite thing in the world to do to find a good hand dyed um, or hand spun or both yarn um, you know it's it's a great idea to ask the person who sold it to you or if they're not around, you can always be safe washing it in um, a cold or just kind of a body temperature water, not hot, and uh, just drying it flat. That's always your safe way to go. So let's cast on. And you can take, we're gonna do the long tail and it is called that because you make a long tail of this yarn, right? Some people will say, I never know how much yarn to use uh, for my long tail. And that is a tricky thing, I, I will tell you the truth. <laughs> so what I do, I learned this trick not too long ago. You leave yourself a little bit of extra and then you just hold it on the needle with your thumb and wrap it around however many times. Now, the cowl I did is 45 stitches. I'm just gonna do 25 because uh, just it, for the sake of time today, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm gonna have to slide it down a little. Don't lose your spot. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay. So then I'm going to give myself just a little bit extra, okay? And this amount of yarn right here 
get rid of that one. This will be just about enough for our purposes, okay? And that works really pretty well. It, it's a good, good way to guess for our long tail method, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a little slip knot. This is the very easiest way to do a long tail, okay? And catch that yarn up through there, and pull it kind of snug, all right? So let me do that one more time just so you can see it. You wrap it around your finger, and then pull that yarn from the back right through. Pull kind of snug. There you go. Then you take both strands in your left hand. Now I am a righty, so if you are a lefty, um, you're going to be doing this the opposite direction, okay? You got it in your left hand, your needle's in your right, your thumb's kind of just holding that stitch steady there. Put your finger, forefinger and your thumb through and you spread that apart. So it makes almost a triangle, I don't know, maybe diamond shape there, okay? And this is gonna feel tricky, but you can do it. <laughs> so you're gonna go under the one in front of your thumb, pick up that yarn with your needle. You're gonna go over the one in back of your thumb, twisting your hand to catch the one with your forefinger, okay? So it's wrapped around, wrapped around your needle there. And see this loop? You're gonna go back through that. So you're gonna twist that hand back and pull it, pull it through, okay? And pull it kinda, t not too tight, but snugly, all right? And you've got yourself two stitches already, all right? So let's do it again. Pull your hand, put your, your forefinger and your thumb through, pull your hand this way. You're gonna catch that one in front of your thumb, go over the one in back of your thumb, twisting your hand, catch this one up here by your forefinger. You're gonna go down through that loop, right there. Pull it snugly. When I was learning this, I thought I would never learn it. <laughs> but it is so much easier than, than the way that I was doing it that I, I'm not even going to show you how I was doing it because um, it was tricky uh, as well. And it was kind of a, an adaption of a, of a different way that was tricky, tricky, tricky. Um, this is basically, you're just knitting with your thumb as your other needle instead of instead of two needles, okay? So we're catching that. Most of the work is with your thumb. Let's see here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16. Oh my goodness, I'm going too fast and got stuck there. 17, 18, 19, 20. And there are, I don't even know, so many cast ons and bind offs that you could use. Um, I just did a class that we did 40 of them, and that was fun. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25. Nice to check there, you know? And here's this little bit of yarn that we have left, which is nice. Okay, that's a good amount. It's still gonna be tempting to um, try to knit with my tail end instead of my working yarn. So what I usually do is just make a little butterfly out of this. You don't have to tie it too tightly because you're gonna wanna untie it later. But when I see that it's in the butterfly, I am less likely to knit down my tail instead of my working yarn, because that's frustrating. And we have all done that many more times than we would like to admit. Okay. So this is just a basic cast on. Okay. There's all kinds of fancy things you could do with this, but um, this is a good one. <laughs> Very basic, but really, really useful. All right, so our needle, if you look here, this is our working needle. The stitch 
um, wraps all the way around, right? And so what we're gonna do to knit, we're gonna go in through the front toward the back and we're gonna go right through the middle of that stitch. Okay, so we're not gonna be going through both of them. That would look like this. We're gonna go through one. And we're gonna wrap the yarn around the back needle and pull that yarn through. Okay, so through the front into the middle of the stitch, wrap around the back needle and pull it through. And one more time through the front into the middle of the stitch, yarn wrapped around the back needle, pull it through and off the hook. All right. And that is your knit stitch. So the front of the the front side for this pattern, sometimes people will make the purl side your front side, your right side, but that's going to make this flatter stitch. Okay, this is knit. And if you were to knit every row, you would get a bumpier texture than this. Um, it would look more like a purl, but it would it's a, a lovely stitch. It's called garter stitch. And uh, many beginning projects especially are made with garter stitch because you, you only have to know how to knit. But it did kind of make a resurgence a few years ago and lots and lots of designs are made with, with just a garter stitch. So if you love that, then guess what? You're there. You already know how to do all that you need to know to do a garter stitch project. And we are just about to the end of this first row and for this project uh, I had you do a stockinette stitch so we're gonna knit all the way across the front like we've done here and get a little more yarn here we're getting to the end oops okay and sometimes this happens to me I don't know if it happens to other people but that last stitch kind of uh, falls off the needle just put it back on no biggie. Yeah, people panic sometimes when they're learning because they don't know how easy it is to fix that kind of problem. All right, and you can already see there's the the cast on bumps at the bottom, which are lovely. And then we start we're starting to get that little flat stitch right in there, exactly what we want to see. Some more yarn. Come back over here. Now this one because we're gonna do the back of it, right? So we want to do completely the opposite. And we've got all our pearl bumps on this side. That's how we know that's the pearl side. This time we're gonna put our needle through the front of that stitch, still going through the middle. We're gonna wrap around the front needle and push that yarn right out through the back, okay? So again, going through the middle, this time the needle is in front, wrapping it around and pushing that yarn that we got on the loop, pushing it right off the back and off. Okay. Wrap it around, push it off the back. And so this one is really the, these two stitches, knit and purl, are the basis for everything else that you're gonna do in knitting. So uh, this is a good project to practice those two stitches. And then once you've got it, you can do anything in knitting. All the other fancy stitches are based on these two stitches. And you've already got them. <laughs> so we'll just finish up this row here. And then I'll show you very quickly the... Uh, checkerboard which is just these two stitches again all righty we're gonna flip back over now see we've got the flat stitches on this side and bumpy stitches on this side and we're gonna start the checkerboard now here I'm going to show you how to count these so we've got these upside down V's, they're 
uh, they're each our one stitch. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. And if I wanted to count up, one, two, three, four, and five. If you wanted to change the size of your squares, you're certainly welcome to do that as well, depending on the project, if you wanted to adapt this. But this does make a nice uh, width for a scarf, the 45 across. So because I'm just doing 25 for our sample, I only have five squares, but in the project there are nine. So I'm gonna start with knit again. So again, my needle's gonna go in the back for knit. One, wrap it around, pull it through, two, three, four, and five. But now I need to purl it, right, to make this bumpy square. So I'm gonna pull it to the front, go in the front this time, one, two, three, four, and five. Now what? Pull it to the back, exactly. Oops. Pull it to the back and my needle's gonna go in the back. One, two, three, four, and five. And pull it to the front. One, two, three, four, and five. One more time. One, two, three, four, and five. You can see here it's flat all the way because those are all knit stitches. But here, you can start to see those bumps. I don't know, well, can you see them on the camera? I hope so. There's little bumps here showing the beginning of the square. But remember, knit and purl are opposite. So when we turn over here, you see the uh, knit stitches are over here and the purls are here. That's exactly what's supposed to happen because they're opposite. So right now, even though I ended with a knit, I'm gonna start with a purl over here. One, two, three, four, and five. And you're just gonna continue that. You know, here I'd start and do my knitting. You go across all the way. I put two rows of checkerboard. You could put three or four or five. You could do the whole thing in checkerboard if you wanted. Or you could do a couple of rows of checkerboard and maybe 10 rows of stockinette and then stripe that out a little bit, whichever you would like to do. Um, just to review, this one had 45 stitches across and I did each of those squares uh, five stitches each and five rows each, all right? Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. I would love to see what you make with yours and what yarns you make. Um, I am very tempted to take that baby alpaca that I had, uh, that I got at Ravelo Fibers. It's a Harriet and it is just gorgeous. Um, so I might make that up for something and I may be wearing that when I see you soon. But hope you enjoyed it. Love to see what you're knitting. And uh, thanks for joining me today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.